Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about Cisco Unified Border Element, also known as CUBE. Uh, for most organizations, CUBE is deployed at the edge of the network uh, for assistance or additional security and routing calls out to the IP-based PSTN. Uh, so for the most part, we're just going to go over some, um, some configuration for CUBE if you have a requirement for routing calls out to the PSTN, and uh, also briefly review some of the security features that Cube has inside of it. One of the um, one of the other benefits that I think that uh, you can get from using Cube at the edge of the network is increased visibility and uh, and simplified troubleshooting. So we're going to go over that as well today. And uh, before we do that, uh, let me just go ahead and level set a little bit. By, uh, by going over some of the use cases for Cube. So, um, like I said, uh, most organizations use Cube for security at the edge of the network. Um, Cube, um, in industry terms, is known as a session border controller. And so what it does is it provides um, session control for calls that are routed out to the PSTN, meaning um, it it uh, terminates sessions on the inside of a single interface and then uh, re-originates them for, um, for the outbound calls. Um, one of the reasons why uh, this is beneficial is because most organizations don't have public IPs to, uh, to hand out to all of their UC infrastructure and servers, uh, not to mention the phones that would be needed to route out to the PSTN. So, so basically, Cube does network address translation as it terminates that call on the inside of the interface, that private IP uh, address interface, and then uh, re-originates the call on a interface that has a public IP and uh, out to the PSTN. So um, from the outside looking in as well, um, Cube is able to provide organizations with a function called topology hiding, meaning um, if anyone were to scan your organization's network, it would hide the topology and um, the UC infrastructure that rides in your organization. And uh, you can do that a number of ways. You can apply ACLs on your cube, on your router running cube, and uh, certainly you can close down some of the ports that are being used for your UC infrastructure. Uh, last but not least, again, is the prevention of denial of service attacks or telephony denial of service attacks. So um, if you had your call manager sitting on the outside of the network, uh, attackers could, could scan your environment and just start pounding away at your UC infrastructure. By having a cube at the edge of the network, at least um, you would be able to prevent um, you would be able to allow internal calls to occur across your organization. So, um, so again, we'll get into some of those uh, aspects in a few seconds, and then we're going to get into some of the aspects of enabling some of the visibility features on Cube, which is basically a set of features that runs on top of a Cisco router. Um, another use case is to provide session control between sites, and uh, maybe this is a less popular use case, but still powerful nonetheless. Uh, if you're an organization that has multiple branch sites, maybe you have an MPLS uh, wide area network, and it's private, it's dedicated, it's secure, um, there could be a way for you to co cut costs and use uh, SIP TLS based encryption um, over a unsecure medium to provide the privacy that you need for your signaling traffic. So um, leveraging certificates and um, encryption um, for the media, SRTP media, um, you could simplify how branch sites connect to each other and um, also centralize your connectivity out to the PSCN at the same time. So um, Hopefully that makes sense. Um, before we, um, now that we're done with our introduction to the, to the, uh, 
cube functionality, um, I want to pull up two different um, routers that I have cube enabled on. And um, one of them is my 4331. And so this is a newer platform. Um, but essentially, you know, how you configure cube is a uh, is very straightforward. Um, you have your voice service VoIP command, uh, you have your IP address trusted list, which is not a requirement, but is beneficial for preventing attacks such as toll fraud. Uh, essentially how this works is uh, you have a list of IP addresses that you trust. These are your communication manager subscribers and uh, also the IP addresses from your PSTN provider. And um, once you have those in the list, uh, you can simply go to voice service VoIP, IP address, trusted authenticate. And uh, it basically um, authenticates the IP address of any kind of incoming call to, um, to ensure uh, attackers are not spoofing uh, IP addresses or um, or hairpinning um, calls from the outside of your environment. So um, that's that. And then uh, certainly um, you have your your license capacity, which is um, in the newer routers, uh, you know, use smart licensing, but uh, we still don't really enforce the uh, the licensing aspect yet. Maybe at some point in time we will, but uh, we don't really do that yet. And then. Um, and then last but not least, you know, you can pick which interfaces you want to terminate your signaling and your media on. So, um, so that's the newer platform for the 4331. Um, the older platforms is very similar, uh, but one thing that is different as an example is um, the amount of deep packet inspection capabilities that comes with these new ISR 4000 series platforms. So um, if you've never heard of um, NBAR, NBAR is how you provide deep level uh, packet inspection, uh, inspection at layer 7 of the OSI model. And um, as an example, if I do a show IP NBAR protocol discovery, you can see all the different types of uh, voice over IP traffic that uh, is hitting my router, both on the input on the inbound of my gig 000 interface and also on the output. And so, you know, where this is important is um, you would typically only expect voice over IP traffic to be ingressing and egressing this router. If, um, if you shut something else like HTTP traffic, you may want to investigate what that is and uh, put a, a layer of security on top of that. So if I just compare and contrast, right, uh, I pull up my, my older platform router, which is a 2911. If I do a show IP NBAR protocol discovery here, um, although I have UC traffic hitting these, um, this gig 00 interface, notice I don't have true um, insight into the kinds of UC traffic that's hitting the router. Right. Um, actually, what how it presents itself is for for like SIP TLS traffic, it's going to show up as SSL based traffic. It doesn't understand the difference between SSL and um, and SIP TLS traffic. So um, one of the reasons why the 4331 or the 4000 series platforms can provide greater visibility is um, this uh, this new command called fine grain. So um, let me just do a show run. Um, actually, let me just show show run gig. So this is basically how you configure NBAR. Very simple. You just apply this uh, this command to your interfaces that uh, calls um, are coming in and going out on within Cube. And then um, if you want to have deep packet inspection. Um, you can specify fine grain, which is enabled by default, but the protocols themselves are not. So, for example, um, I specified um, 
a level of granularity uh, called fine grain or SIP, SIP TLS, and also SSL within my, uh, my cube router. So um, something that can give you visibility again that uh, maybe you haven't really enabled before, but would be good to know if, uh, if you have it sitting on the edge of the network. So that's the one aspect of the visibility. And, uh, and by the way, I think this fine grain um, command came out in um, 15 3.14, I forget the iOS XE versions, but, uh, but in any case, uh, enable it. Uh, another aspect of visibility is the troubleshooting aspect. And um, as an example, I have Translator X here. And um, Translator X is basically a tool that you can use to um, input uh, logs. So if you're familiar with the term um, or the debug command, debug CC, CC SIT messages, um, you can see the different types of SIT messages that come across your cube router, which again are, are ways to help streamline your troubleshooting process. Um, certainly you have the ability to go into a tool like RTMT and uh, pull up the call logs within RTMT. But in my opinion, it's like sifting through, um, sifting for a needle through a haystack sometimes because so many calls are going across Communications Manager. And um, as you're troubleshooting calls at the edge of the network, you're going to have less calls going through your cube. But, uh, but even still, um, what's cool about Translator X is you have the ability to apply filters on your log messages. And so what I've done is zeroed in on um, all the calls going across my cube router on November 30th from 1 a.m. to 9 p.m. and um, applied a filter. And um, this helps troubleshoot a um, scenario in which I was receiving a 404 not found error. And so basically um, I was trying to route a call through cube. Um, the call was failing. I grabbed the logs off of my um, console within cube and then pasted them into RTN, uh, Translator X. And so um, it gives you the timestamps of the calls that were placed. It orders them. It gives you the direction that the call was uh, coming in and going out on. And then uh, if, you, if you need it, it has the ability to generate a diagram. So if you look at this first uh, invite at 1725, you can see that, um, that a call from... Um, a call from 3001 came into my cube router and um, it was destined to 1001 um, that happened to be at you know one of my dial peers and so I matched a dial peer and um, I know that this IP address is a call manager um, node and um, everything should have been working right but for whatever reason the call was failing so, uh, so, you know, basically, you know, just knowing, you know, if I have a SIP trunk from my communications manager to my cube, um, the only thing that really exists um, between here and there, uh, between my cube and my call manager is my dial peer for the call routing, and then also on the call manager side, my SIP trunk. So, um, after glancing at my dial peers, everything looked fine. Um, after looking at my SIP trunk, I noticed I forgot to configure a call-in search space with the right partition. And so once I um, configured a call-in search space on my call manager subscriber and uh, reset it, uh, calls were working fine. So uh, just an example of how Cube can be used to quickly troubleshoot an issue. In this case, I think it took me less than five minutes to troubleshoot. So... Um, so I mentioned dial peers. I'll um, I'll pop back over to, to Cube here in a second because I've already kind of shown you how to enable Cube itself, and um, you can always verify that Cube is enabled by doing Show Cube Status. And you can see the version I'm running and and uh, the the version of Cube itself. Uh, I have this alias exec command called SDP. But the last piece is around uh, the dial peers and. And again, I don't really have it configured uh, for the high security right now. I'm just doing basic call routing. But, um, but you have the ability to configure TLS within the dial peers if you want to do TLS sessions for that second scenario. And uh, certainly able to specify 
um, port 5061, uh, which is what TLS would typically use for SIP. And um, it's pretty straightforward. There are certainly other security features that you can enable within Cube, but uh, at a high level, this is how you can provide security at the edge of the network and also session control for remote sites and uh, centralizing PSTN connectivity. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit more about the increased visibility that Cube can provide you. A, with uh, enabling NBAR, which is that layer seven visibility to the types of protocols that are coming in and going out of Cube. And then also uh, a little bit more about how to just enable Cube for providing session control, toll fraud prevention, topology hiding, network address translation. If, um, if you'd like to see any more information about this topic, such as how to configure certificates for Cube to uh, configure TLS connections between Communications Manager and Cube, uh, feel free to leave me a note in the comments section. Hit subscribe and, uh, and let me know what you think about this video. That's all I have for today. Hopefully um, you'll go on and do great things with this Cube device, the configuration. Have a great day.